and they gave me um, they gave me a vegan cake. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Dan Jackson and welcome to my channel, Dan's the Engineer. In this episode, I'm going to be going through a typical fire alarm survey that I undertake. I'm going to look at a survey, it's a block of flats, never been there before, I don't know how many flats, how big it is, how many stories or anything. Um, I've asked for drawings, I've asked for more info and they've not given me nothing. I mean, this is quite common. A lot of people um, send me emails or call me up and say, look, we want you to quote a new fire alarm system. We've been told we need a new fire alarm system. So um, I say, okay, um, what system do you need? And like, oh, we want you to come out and design us a system. I'm like, yeah, but the way it's supposed to work is you're supposed to have a fire risk assessment done and they'll tell you the category of fire alarm system. There's different categories. It might be just be escape routes. It might be the escape routes plus rooms off the escape routes. There might be high risk areas. I don't know your building. So the client is supposed to tell me what type of system they want. So this particular one, um, all they've come back with, hang on, I'll just read it out on my phone. Um, it says, can you please quote for a grade A LD2 fire alarm detection and alarm system based on a BS5839 part one system? So straight away, um, it's sort of contradicting what you're saying because LD2 refers to a domestic system part six but then they then say it's got to be installed to a BS5839 part one, which is a non-domestic fire alarm system. So a bit of discrepancy there. Do they mean inside the flats? Do they mean just a communal stairwell? What do they mean? It, it's the information given to me is not correct. And this is why I'm doing this video. So I can show you typically what happens. Now, what I do is go and survey the building. I take my notes and I go back to them again and say, this is what I recommend. Um, can you clarify this is what you want? And then it's down to them. It's their property, it's their building, they should manage the building, it's not down to me. I'm, I'm the designer of the fire alarm system, I'm gonna be the installer, and hopefully we'll be the maintainer. So, you know, that's my part of it. I can only do what the information is given to me. However, I think it's important for me to go and say, I recommend we have this and we put detection in the flats for this reason and always give a reason why. And I give a bit of a breakdown cost as well. So, you know, cause you'll get companies out there who'll just go in and say, oh, well, LD2, LD2 I'll just stick a domestic smoke alarm system in the communal stairwells and that's that. It doesn't quite work like that. They have mentioned grade A. I've um, printed off, um, some sheets that I've used when I, um, I've, I've made these quite a few years ago actually, um, as a bit of a reference guide to what LD3, LD2, grade A and so forth means. And there's one for part six and one for part one. So part one is non-domestic and part six is domestic. However, what, what you've got to bear in mind guys is that um, some like blocks of flats, for example, will come under part one because of the type of buildings they are and things like care homes and stuff like that, they come under part one, not part six. So. I'll just show you this guys. So this is um, for part six. So as you can see there, we've got LD3, LD2, LD1. You can probably read them and we've got PD1. Um, PD is for property protection, not life protection. L stands for life protection. Uh, it's, it's rare you'll come across a PD1 and 2 system, um, particularly in domestic. And here we've got the fire alarm grades. So they've asked for a grade A. So if we read here, it says grade A is a fire detection and fire alarm system which incorporates control, indicating equipment and power supply equipment conforming to the standards BSEN 54-2 and BSEN 54-4 respectively. So what that means is it needs to be um, a full fire alarm control panel. So, you know, a typical commercial fire alarm system. So they've asked for a LD2. So according to this, they want automatic fire detection as per LD3, so on all escape routes and other areas of high fire risk. That's what they're asking for. But then they said it needs to conform to, to part one. So if we go over to, this is a sort of non-domestic, as you can see, you've got M manual, L5, L5M, L4, you know, and, and everything else. So these are the different categories. And then again, we've got the grades which are the same. So um, as you can see here, it doesn't have LD, LD2 written on here. I've got to go back to them and say, what do you mean? L1, L2, LD2, L4, what, what do you mean? Um, because they're very different things, as you can see. They haven't indicated if they want me to include detection within the flats, because it, 
inferior to flats come under part six. So they might have their own smoke alarm system. So this is what we typically do in flats. You install a fire alarm system in a stairwell. So it covers all the communal landlords areas, electrical risers, you name it, all that sort of thing. In addition, is install a heat detector sounder within close proximity to the entrance of each flat. So the reason for that is that if the flat is on fire, it will um, activate the heat detector and it will set off the rest of the system so um, there can be an evacuation. So people upstairs, downstairs know that there's a fire in that particular flat. Um, and also, if there's a fire elsewhere, it's going to sound the sounders inside the flat. Because if you don't install sounders inside the flat, how are they supposed to hear the fire alarm? Um, because typically you should, in theory, have um, you know a fire rated door. So and you don't want the fire to spread from that individual flat coming out. So you typically have a fire rated door. So um, it's very unlikely if you've got a fire alarm sounder outside that when you're asleep in your bed, you're going to get 75 dB at the bed head to wake you up. That's why we typically typically have um, detector and a sounder inside each flat off the main system. And then each flat will have their own individual systems. So bear in mind, never been to this property before. I don't know how many floors it is. Don't know, don't know how many flats. Don't know what's in the flats. Probably won't even get into the flats. So I'm just going to have a look, take a survey, and I'll give my recommendation. Just going to eat this cupcake and then uh, going to head off. So one of the tenants has kindly let me in, so I'm inside now. Um, I haven't looked around just yet. I've just put the door on that so I can get back in. So I'm just gonna walk around and sort of uh, show you the little room spaces and uh, give you an idea of where I'm gonna be putting detectors for a design. This is the entrance lobby. We need a smoke detector at the top there. Now, depending if it's part one or part six, obviously we don't know yet. Might need a call point on the outside or it might be better to have it on the inside actually um, because it will avoid any false alarms and obviously we've got to put covers on them now so this is the ground floor um, as you can see here it's not a massive there's a battery smoke detector up there um, so I'd be sighting a smoke detector roughly about where that is anyway and then we walk up the stairs We've got a landing, sort of half landing, you see here. So I'll be putting a smoke detector on this landing as well, because it's a you know it is a substantial landing. And we've got another flat here on the next floor up. So it's a sloping stairs, so arguably. Arguably, it might be better just to have a smoke detector here where that one is and uh, not worry about that because obviously if the, it's very little fire risk, we, we've got one at the bottom of the stairs, but the smoke will rise and it will go up this slant here up to this detector. Uh, but let's have a look at the rest. We're going up to the next floor now. And this is the top. It's got flat five. And you've got a smoke detector there. So more or less where, where all the detectors are already. We we'll probably just keep it like that. However, depending on whether they want sounders within the flats or not, it might be advisable to put detectors and sounders outside each flat, which that would mean need one on each level. So we need one on the ground floor, we need one on the sort of, it's not really a first floor, um, sort of mez if you like, and then up the next bit and then the top, so four all in all. And uh, it's gonna be wired up inside the stairwells. Um, now, the cabling, Cabling has to be metal clipped um, to manufacturer's instructions um, but, and that includes if it's in containment and this of course the containment is metal. So in these sort of properties you usually run cables up. I mean we've got a panel going in the lobby there. So typically we'd probably run mini trunk in if that's what they want. Um, it looks a bit better because it can be blended in but as you can see 
all the uh, covings. It's a bit of a decorative coving if you like. Um, and then just clip the cables inside just using P-clips or banding. There's, there's all sorts of things out there as well, but um, as long as it's clipped inside, it looks nice and neat and sort of finish off the corners with cork and stuff like that. And the fuse board cupboard. This is the electrical cupboard. So I'm just gonna have a look in there. Now, it's, it just, yeah. There's no lock or anything on it, which I'm going to recommend they put like an FB lock or something like that because you, I mean, look, you've got all sorts of storage stuff in here. I mean, I've seen a lot worse, but let's just uh, open this up. Right, here we go. So the reason I'm looking in here is because I need to look for my electrical supply for my fire alarm. So um, let's stay in some of this. There needs to be some trunk and lid on that. There we go. I can't help but look at the electrics when I go in here, but anyway. Um, this isn't labelled up as the landlord's board, but I assume it is. I will get clarification from them. Because um, we want to make sure it's metered correctly. And there is, there is a spare way at the end here. So we can just use a separate circuit and we'll be coming out of here, literally through that wall um, yeah literally through that wall um, to our fire panel so it's actually it's quite a nice straightforward one so yeah that, that's the electrics anyway um, and I'll have to make sure seen here we've got a water stopcock in here and you've there's the MET the earthing system it's a uh, PME TNCS so, yeah, you know, I'll probably put a lug on that anyway. The reason I'm looking at this is because we've got to put in a um, fused spur. Uh, it doesn't have to be double pole anymore, though we are going to use it. You know, I like using the, um, the MK metal clad. That's what we're going to recommend. So we've got to put a new circuit in. Because I've got to put a new circuit in, I've got to meet the regulations, um, the relevant regulations 7671. And um, also, because it's domestic, it'll have to be registered with um, building control. So for any fire alarm companies out there who get another electrician in or do it themselves, you should be taking this into account, these type of things. Um, you have to be registered, um, you know, to meet part P and um, all that rubbish. Um, so it's sort of notifiable work because it's a, it's a new circuit. So if you're getting somebody else to do it, you need to be making sure that they're doing their pit as well, bit as well and you're getting certification. So I'm gonna give an option to install detectors and sounders off our fire alarm system for the building internally as well so that um, it can provide early warning. Let's say for example there was a fire in flat number two over there and that's literally the closest one to the front door. Let's say there's a fire in there, the fires obviously it could spread out into the corridor or up or whatever. Surely you want to know if you're on the top floor on number five that there's fire so you can escape. So if we didn't put a detector on our fire alarm system inside the flat, how are they going to know upstairs that there's a fire? It would be too late. It would have spread um, outside of the flat already. So, you know, put that into a real life scenario, explain it like that, then it makes it, well, you know, it justifies, the, you know, it's a sensible reason to do that. Whereas if we just installed detectors in the stairwells, for example, um, you know, it's going to be too late because that is just the, it's purely the escape route. And bear in mind, these sort of buildings are higher risk in terms of people sleep there at night. And likewise, you want a sounder inside individual flats. So if there's a fire elsewhere in a building, you can hear it when you're asleep. Um, because again, it's a vulnerable sort of area. Because um, people you know, might be under the influence of alcohol, drugs, things like that. So, you know, early warning detection and alarm is vital in my opinion, especially on uh, multi-story buildings like this because the risk is high. I'm more for installing addressable systems, um, especially in flats. And the reason for it is because you've got more flexibility. So all you do is run your loop and you can put detectors on there, sounders, um, you can have VADs on there, VIDs. Um, you can have um, interfaces to door stops, you name it. It's nice and easy and also zoning straightforward. Whereas zoning in here is quite difficult with um, a conventional panel because effectively the stairwells are a detection zone for automatic fire detection. However, if you've got call points, 
you want to do the floor where the fire is and it gets a little bit more complicated because of the type of building whereas you with an addressable you can set whatever zone you want it to be you don't have to wire it as a zone it's, it's more straightforward so although there's a little bit more cost involved in addressable panel and detectors it's more flexibility and um, you can do a lot more of it and that's really important and also for future proofing as well one thing that may not have been considered in this building i'm at the top of the stairwell now you've got um what are they called Velux, you know what I mean, one of those uh, windows, that's actually the top, so there's no um, AOV, automatic vent opening system, and the idea between them, um, with them is that if there's smoke in the stairwell and you know it rises, it can't go anywhere, so basically it starts filling up with smoke and going down and down and down and down the building, whereas if you've got an AOV, lets all the smoke out because more people die from the smoke than they do fire so um, I might recommend it it's not something that we install personally but they can get another company and we can interface it with a fire alarm system as well um, that's a you know consideration if you're sort of managing one of these blocks which um, could save people's lives in the event of a fire and I've also noticed there's no emergency lighting either um, again it comes down to risk assessment I'm down on the um, ground floor now and obviously when the light keeps turning out it is pretty dark I mean it, bear in mind it's in the middle of the day right now so there is natural light from the front door and also that window at the top there that we've seen um, but again you think if it's pitch black in the middle of the night and there's an emergency and they need to get out I feel this building does require and now don't get me wrong the people will be aware that like you, you see now um, I'm standing by the front door so there is some natural light there, but most of it is quite dark. It's just you don't want anybody tripping up the stairs because they can't see. And the lady who opened the door um, originally for me, um, she's quite elderly, so um, wouldn't want her tripping over anything or anything like that if there was no lighting. So it's something again that I'm going to recommend. And there's there's so many different ways of doing it. You can have uh, bulkheads. You can have um, you can have maintained fittings that are part of the lighting system. Although you see they they're quite decorative, aren't they? So I can't see them wanting to change them for some you know white round cheap bulkheads. But there we go. There's there's a solution to every building. I've been told that there's no drawing for the building, but we're going to have to produce drawings for zone diag um, diagrammatic charts um, and uh, for as fitted drawings as well. I hate these switches. Absolutely hate them. All I do now is go back to the office. I design a system, nice and straightforward. I'll come together with a proposal. Um, like I said, probably go with an addressable system um, and say, this is why. I always give reasons why and explain so they don't just look at that bottom line cost and go, well, someone else can do it, you know, 300 pound cheaper than you. It's like, okay, that's, that's fine, but it doesn't mean it does the same as what our system does. And, you know, ultimately, I don't want to give them something that's over the top either because, you know, why pay over the odds for something? and uh, it's up to them whether they accept or decline and obviously i can talk them through it that's it guys thanks for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it please like it and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to my channel goodbye see you on the next one